Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. Hi, everybody. I am Dioselin Gonzalez, VR Principal Engineer at Labs. Let's talk about video. Video playback is a very common scenario in games and other interactive experiences. And with virtual reality and 360 video, other kind of uh, immersive technologies, this is more the case. Do we have 360 creators, artists here in the audience? Great, I see some of you. Awesome, you're gonna like this. So, uh, like I said, this is a very common scenario, much more the case with new immersive technologies. So it is natural that Unity would tackle this very seriously. And that's why I'm very happy to announce new work by our AV team today, which is a video player. Not just any video player. It's completely new, completely rewritten from scratch with performance in mind. The AV team created it um, completely up to take advantage of hardware acceleration. Uh, it plays, uh, it decodes H.264, VP8, and it's built to, to decode many other codecs. As with everything, Unity, of course, is multi-platform. And it's perfect for 360 videos, like I said. It's going to come to you for Unity 5.6. Now, you know what it is? Let's see how it works. I have a couple of demos here today to show you. The first demo, I have a simple scene here. And what I want to sh um, show you is how easy it is to set it up for 360 video. So I have a camera here. The camera just has a script that follows the mouse, so I can move it around, and a point light. So I'm going to create a sphere centering the origin. I'm going to assign a material to the sphere. This material is just a shader that flips the normal, so instead of going out, they're going to go in, so when I'm inside the sphere, I can see the video. And then I have here a 360 video that is 4K resolution. What I do, I drag it to the sphere, and then I have here a new video player component. So I'm just going to select autoplay, let's make it loop, and then hit play. And there it is. It's playing. You can see it in all its glory. 360 video 4K resolution. Isn't that cool? Come on. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So that's how easy it is to set up a 360 video um, experience. Now, uh, I have a second example that I wanted to show you today, which is developed by our friends from Mirada Studios. Mirada Studios, um, they're based here, by the way, and they, they, the way they describe themselves is as having creativity at its heart and technological innovation at, as its engine. That's quite cool, right? So thanks to them, to our partners at Mirada, they've been doing, by the way, th for three and a half years, they've been doing VR, AR, VFX, animations, etc. And they put together this interactive 360 experience. So let's say here, I'm, you know, in the office, Look around, and I'm, you know, I just want to take a break. So should I go skiing? It's too cold for me. Should I go hiking in the mountains? I don't feel like the, like the heights today. I'm from the Caribbean, so I love the beach. So let's go to the ocean. And here it is. It's playing my video. I want to go close to the shore, and there it is. Let me just show it to you all. Three, in all 360 glory, and I'm just going to go back. So that's it. Um, as you can see, it's very, quite easy to, to set up, and it's coming to you, like I mentioned, for Unity 5.6. Hope you like it. <laughs> yes. All right, so with that, I want to introduce to you my colleagues, my co-workers from Unity Labs that are going to show you new work that we've been doing lately at Unity Labs. So with this, I want to present to you uh, Amir Ibrahimi. He's the lead architect for Editor VR and Timoni West, our principal designer. Hello, guys. We've been hard at work since February, haven't we? It's been we? a long couple of months. Yeah, at, at Vision Summit, we announced and showed off our first, uh, one of our first lab projects, a VR authoring tool. 
Since then, we've been building a strong foundation to support all of, the, all of the developer tools we expect to see coming from you for Editor VR. Now we're going to take a few minutes to show you what, to, what you can expect to see in December. Hey, you have a Vive on this time. I have a Vive on? What? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, we support both. All right. How are we doing? Are we live? You are live. Take it away. Sweet. OK, so as you can see, we are in the beautiful world of Firewatch. Thanks so much to Campo Santos for letting us use these amazing assets. How many of you guys have played Firewatch? You guys know the game? It's so great, right? Yes. I love it. I wish I was announcing Firewatch VR today, but I am not. OK. If you've played the game or if you haven't played the game, you might notice this space is looking a little empty right now. So what I'm going to do is add some uh, objects to the scene view. So you see here is the Unity button. I click on that, and I get my main menu. And now I'm going to open up the project view. OK, so this is your project view. This is new. And this is called a workspace. It's basically the 3D equivalent of a window. So just like in the regular Unity, you can resize it to any size you want. You can put it wherever you want. And you've got your files on the left here, and then you have your game objects on the right. So I'm going to open up the desk thing here. I cleverly sorted my objects already. And I just start adding objects to the scene. And Mary, you want to talk a little bit about performance stuff? Sure. So if you're, if you're taking a look at the project workspace, you can see as she moves her pointer over different objects, we're only rendering one object at a time. If you're a VR developer, you likely already know why. It's for performance reasons. Also, I'll point out that this is just Unity's normal UI system. So as a developer, you're not building anything new. You don't have to learn anything new. This is important for us because we want you to be able to take the UIs you build for Editor VR and be able to transport them to your built players that you release. That's right. We want to make it really easy for you to just get running with this stuff. OK, so now you can see I have a totally messy desk. Yeah. One reason why we decided to go with Firewatch as opposed to a native VR experience is we think that this will be genuinely useful for you, even if you're not making a VR experience, if you're just making something in 3D. And I'm going to show that off by showing just how quickly it is to quickly lay out something like this that has a lot of components. So da -da 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 -da. feel free to add your own music here as I do this. Camera. Thanks. <laughs> Mug. Pencil back up. OK, ta-da, really fast. It's just that easy to do it, just like doing it in real life. So you might notice some of these assets, obviously, they're a little bit off-center, because I did that really fast. So there's a couple things you can do here. First, we have snapping tools. And secondly, you can actually just go back in here and bring up the inspector. So here you go. The inspector is blank to start off with, but you can see it's also a workspace. And I'm going to hit the typewriter here. And there you go, you've got your inspector in VR. Ta da! <laughs> and it looks gorgeous, by the way. Special shout out here to Dylan for making this absolutely beautiful interface. So uh, I'm going to click here in local rotation, and this little keyboard's going to pop up. Yeah, so this is an example of one of our UIs, it's the numeric input. UI. We have two different keyboards. We have a full-size keyboard. However, this one's much easier to enter numeric input for your float fields or your integer fields. That's right. Um, editing or typing in VR is a little bit different than typing on a physical keyboard. So the cool thing about this is, is it's specialized. If when it's at an angle like this, you hit the trigger to type in the numbers. But if you actually take it and point it down like so, you, it switches over to a drum pad. And then you can type much more uh, fast, but it's a little bit less precise. So that's the kind of thing we're working on right now. Awesome. So I think we have a few more workspaces to show, too. We have the console and the profiler, which you've seen before. Can you bring those up? Sure, of course. Everybody loves the console and the profiler, right? In VR? Where are my VR devs at? You guys know you want this. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, these have been workspacified again. Again, you can move them. You can resize them. You can also move them all together at the same time. And if you locomote anywhere in the space, they'll just follow you around. And we have this other workspace, right, the chessboard? That's right. We got the chessboard. How many of you guys remember this? You might have seen it at GDC if you were there earlier this year. So the chessboard, thanks for coming, one guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So the chessboard is a mini map of the same view that you're already in. You can move around objects, especially large scale objects. You can move yourself from location to location. But I actually want to show you something a little inception. You want to see a mirror? What do you mean? All right, check it out. I'm going to open up a second chessboard here. You can do two chessboards? Two chessboards. <laughs> Not one, two. <laughs> one, two. And I've got the same view here. And I'm actually going to pick up the typewriter from this view. Now, I can just pull this typewriter out and put it next to me. This is really handy if you've got something far away that you just want to get back next to. But I can put it back in the scene here, or I can actually just move it into another scene like so. Ta-da! So this is helpful if you're moving. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Chirpy shit. So this is kind of a rando example, but we honestly think this will be really useful if you're doing things like moving large objects or small objects to a large or a far away distance. All right, well, I think that's about all we got to show to you today. No, that's not all. We still have one more thing. What? One more thing? Yeah. What is it? Open up your tools pane on your main menu. Tools pane? What are tools? So tools are VR-specific extensions to Editor VR. This is where you guys come in. We have an open API that allows anyone to quickly build new functionality or extend existing functionality. So. The first tool we want to highlight is a tool called Creations. This is made by Milan and Dario of Nevermind. It, it took them only two weeks to get this into Editor VR. It allows you to SDF sculpt. Yeah, ready to get some sculpting in Unity in VR? Let's do it. Here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> Amir, what do you think? Mm, I wouldn't quit your day job. Oh, harsh but fair. <laughs> All right, how about this other tool, Tavori? So yeah, Tavori is another tool. It's uh, available on Steam Early Access right now, uh, also built in Unity. Um, but we worked with this team in Moscow. It's Dimitri and Victor. And they basically took their core functionality from Tavori and brought it into Editor VR, also in two weeks. We don't give anyone any time, do we? All right, so how many people have tried out Tavori on early access on Steam? Anybody in the room familiar? A couple of people? OK. So the interface, so if you do try it out, is the exact same as it is here. So what I do is, when I hit the record button here, any object that I move from here on out has its movements recorded on this timeline. So for example, if I want to have the camera, say, fall on the ground, I can just go like that. If I pick up the pencil. I just start drawing like so. I'm going to hit pause. And when I go back and hit play, it not only moves on the screen, but you can also see it moving directly in VR. So we think a tool like this will be helpful for you VR developers to quickly prototype your animations. Yeah, plus when you start moving the cups back and forth, it gets this real like Disney VR guest kind of vibe. I've VR seen her do this. I mean, we've been practicing a lot, so I've been seeing her do this, but it's still funny to it's still fun to watch. All right, so that's what we got. So there's a lot more functionality to explore, and we'll be going over that in our talk tomorrow. When is that? 11:30. See you guys there. Before we finish, here's an important point that I want to emphasize to you, our community. We've built EVR to, for you to take it and run with it. We don't have all the answers for VR. No one does. We're giving you a baseline of useful tools to get you started, and we think you'll quickly want to experiment with your own. And that's why we've prioritized EVR from the ground up to be fully extensible and open source. Because we're most excited to see what amazing tools you're going to build for it, and our goal is to support you. Thank you. Can I introduce Kat? Yeah, I'm going to shut up.